We're uh, we're trying to work through a couple of little um, teething problems. There is a live chat going, so I'm told, but I can't view it, so I can't see what you're saying yet. We're up. Thank you very much. Do you don't want to come and say hello real quick? No, because I'm not sweating. <laughs> yeah, well, hello. This was supposed to be just like a, oh yeah, this is really easy. We'll just act as if there's nothing going on. I tell you what, I'm really stressed. <laughs> First time you do anything is always really stressful. Uh, all I'm doing really is uh, tomorrow I was planning on on meeting somebody. One of the, one of the blokes who's, who knows me from the fish locker and through the videos is coming down to my local area to try some fishing. And uh, if I can get, find the time, I was going to go meet him for a couple of hours. Now he's going to be fishing a pier mark, which is it's sandy in one area and it's got some some broken rock and reef down to one side so um what i what i advised him to do what he was already suggesting to do is we'll fish on the sand with small baits and i'm going to fish in the rocks for eels so i'm just getting my gear ready to do that i'll um <laughs> once i get chance i'll have a look through some of these some of these comments if you've got any questions i'll try and answer them as i go um just bear with me because there's already 20 different comments I'm going to have to scroll through on the fly as I'm doing it. But quite a few of you have already noticed this in the videos. Uh, a few of you have already got them. I've had this for probably 10 years. It's not the biggest, it's not the best, but neither am I. All I really do, I mean I've, I've gone all the way from one end of the spectrum to the others. When I first started I thought I want to take everything I might possibly need and I was like a pack horse going down to a mark. I was carrying like five bags and buckets and boxes and two rods and all that and you were knackered by the time you got there. Now I definitely believe that less is more. Not only do you enjoy it in that you can walk to your mark and you're not absolutely wounded by the time you get there out of breath and take five minutes to get yourself right before you set up. But also it's, it's supposed to be fun. To start off with, in the top, like I explained in one of my other videos, just the stuff that I need straight away. So when I first get to the mark, I always like to get a rod out straight away. So I want to be able to set up as quick as possible. I'm always itching to get out of it. So I carry a lot of stuff in one of these. And all it is, is if you can see it, all the little bits and bobs you're going to need. So a bead, a swivel, a clip, any manner of little things all little odds and sods usually at the end of a session what i'll do is when i'm breaking down rigs i want to break my kit down to put it all away i chuck it in there and a little clip like that no chance no chance any of it's going to go walking i like to keep a few hooks now like i said tomorrow when i go i'm going to be fishing on the sand with small baits and small hooks for like flatfish dabs flounders I might pick up some whiting, you know, anything that might come along. And also I'll be fishing for congas in the rocks. So I'm gonna need small hooks, I'm gonna need big hooks. All I do is, now you'll see in most of my videos, I do, I do like cocks and roll. I think they're fantastic. People have said, oh, well, why don't you? I do use other hooks. Like say, for instance, they used to come with stingers. Now it's a lot like the cocks and roll specimen extras, Stingers and, and the, well actually I'll dig some out in a minute. They're just a strong gauge, long shank hook. I like them because they present a worm bait really well. So I've got some of them in there. Um, bit elastic. This is like my trusty rusties. Hooks that I've used before that are still good. If I've used a hook in a session, I won't put it back in a bag with brand new hooks because it'll turn all the other ones rusty. So all I do is I have a little box like that which I call me trusty rusties. If I'm going to be making like a scratching rig up or a rig that I'm, there's a chance I might lose it in the rocks. I'll use my old rusty hooks. That way I feel like I'm not losing out. And small hooks and big hooks. That's all I'm going to need. I've started, on the boat I'll use meat hooks, fishing for congas. On the shore I've tried sea beasts. They're an awful lot like um, mustard O'Shaughnessy's or mustard vikings. They haven't quite got the gape that I like, but I have had a lot of success lately using chinos. Now, you can get other brands of chinos, it just so happens to be that these are the ones that I've got. Now, your chinos, a real strong gauge and a real wide gape. 
put a real big bait on there and keep the hook point proud. That's the top. Oh, right, also, spare batteries. A number of times you've got to a mark and you've like, click your headlamp on, crap, I forgot to change my batteries. I'll always have some spare. Or the same way being is your scales, it'll only be that one time when you catch a great fish and you've got to get your scales out, you realise your batteries are flat. Oh, these. Just by like, little tin snips. I've always got a couple of pairs of them. Cost are great. I mean, I've got 200 pound mono here. This is heavy for the show. I won't be using 200 pound. I might go to 100 pound. But that's how easy it is. Loads better than scissors. And uh, loads easier to get like a tag end than a knife is. I like these little snips. Fits straight in your pocket. Or fit perfectly on the top of your box. Right. Again, less is more. All I have, I have some £60, some £15, and some £100. My £60 is my shock leader, or if I'm going to be making like a rig body for a Wessex rig or something like that. My £15 low row is my scratching rig hook lengths. So my dab, my dab hook lengths. And this is for my conga rigs. And all I do is, I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight grip leads of varying weights, all from being quite light, 125 grams, all the way up to, typically these are in ounces, like eight ounce. So all the way through the tide, even though they are quite slack tides, you might have a bit of a tide pull. Now, I'm only carrying eight, so I've got a couple of each weight. If I lose eight leads, I'm packing up and going home. Never mind running out of leads, I'll be fuming. So I'm, <laughs> some people get down there and they've got 20 leads. You're carrying 20 leads. And a couple of flat ones from your Wessex rigs. That's it. Now, I do keep a little pot. And this is the pot that's got all my little bits of terminal tackle in. It's a bit like Aladdin's cave in there. That you don't know what you might find. I used to keep everything in loads and loads of little, little different pots. So there's like 10 different pots. And then one time I fell over on the rocks one night. And I lost a couple of them. And I didn't realise to grow them. I thought, well, what am I playing at? If I keep everything in one pot, I've only got to worry about one pot. I like this stuff. Now this is, uh, it's just loamy chub. Pick it up for, I can't even remember, it's like a couple of quid, 1.99 or something like that. I put, I put uh, an eBay link on the Fish Locker Facebook page to go to this. Uh, and all you do is you just slide it up over the mono. Now not only does it glow in the dark, so it's added attraction, but it's added abrasion resistance for your rigs. That's it. And my reels, you were saying that I've got my spin fisher 7500. What I tend to do is unwind the handle so it collapses like that. So it fits into the better. This actually is uh, is another reel. I haven't I haven't told anyone about this yet, I haven't done a review on this yet. When I when I asked the question a while ago about what fixed spool to get. I got um, I got sent a link about these and they're they're cheap knockoffs from China. They're supposed to be like an affinity and they come in varying sizes. But whereas your affinities, I mean these are like 150 quid and your affinities are 100 quid. This was 27 pounds posted. Now I kind of thought well 27 quid if it turns out to be great bargain. If it turns out to be naff it doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll let my daughter use it until she breaks it type of thing. Now, you can tell immediately when you're using some of that's high class and something like this. But for somebody starting out, where you've not got limit, you've only got limited amount of, of cash, these are perfect. And also, 
chances it's like when you get your first car you don't want to get a real nice car first car because that's the one that you bump that's when you bump and bang and these 27 quid and if you get a year's fishing out of it it'll be fantastic i'll i'll put a link in on my facebook page about these i, th I thought i'd mention so but again annoyance is the line clip They're not bad for casting, they're not bad for retrieving. I imagine if I've got a good conger on it, it will probably fall to pieces, but we'll just see. Uh, and that's it, that's literally, I mean, look how that's my tackle box. You can lift it up with one hand. Now, I'll stick a rag in there as well, and I'll put my knife and I'll put a little chopping board, but that ultimately is it. Now, you don't need loads of fancy kit, like I, well, I, I hope that I've shown you in my videos. You don't need loads of gear. The rods. These are Shimano Katanas. <laughs> I've tried saying that a few times. Uh, I've had one of them since... I've had one of them for seven years. I know exactly when I got it because I got given it by a sea angler. When I caught it. I caught a bass one time. And uh, they give me a rod. It was... Uh, at the time, it was far outside what I would have paid for a rod, because at the time I, I didn't have didn't have enough money to be able to spare to buy decent fishing gear, uh, and I I used it four or five years, and it turns out that I really liked it. So when I come to buy a second one, I bought another one. Now, um, people have asked me, a guy specifically has asked me today. He says, when you come on your live, can you talk a little bit about your fishing rods? Um, I might not be the best person to ask about beach casters. Because I aren't a tournament caster. I can cast with one of these rods with a fixed pole, 150 yards, with a, a six ounce lead and a ray bait, and that's all I've ever needed. I'm lucky that my marks, most of your fish are inside of 100 yards, so that's all I've ever needed. And I can hit them with, with a, a bit of oomph for another red thumb. Now, one's a 12 foot six, and one's a 13 foot. One's an AR, which is all rounder. The other one's RD. I can't remember what that means. But I think it's rough ground. So it's a stiff rod. Now, I've got a bit of weight behind me. I'm pulling a big bait and a big weight. I still struggle to f to get these loaded up. When I say loaded up, I mean get a proper bend in them. Get the power out of the blank of the rod. If someone was starting off, and I'm sure there are people on, on this link and who follow me who are better short anglers than I am. I'm, I, I don't profess to be anything anything but a, a lucky amateur most of the time I would recommend if you're starting out look at what your budget wants don't don't read in all the magazines and think oh, all right I immediately need a Ziplex you don't you don't immediately need the most expensive gear out there I would say this if you're if you're a good caster and you can you can make it work for you yeah they might be brilliant but if you're just starting out if you're just getting into it or you're just getting back into it or see if you're if you're not at 100% mobility, go for a softer rod. And generally, a little bit longer will help you cast. So a 13-foot rod, because of the longer lever, will help you cast rather than like a 12-foot rod. Now, um, if people want to talk to me more about it, I will answer messages. Um, I'll have a quick look through here and see if I can pick any out. Uh, evening, John. Really enjoyed the boat grids. What boat do you have? I've got an Orkney 520. It's waiting to go back in the water. Yeah, them 50, 60 mile an hour winds are ridiculous. Oh, it's starting to really annoy me. Get myself all geared up. I'd, I'd just managed to get a berth for my boat. And I was thinking, oh, brilliant. I'll spend the summer. I mean, because all this last year I've been trailing it. I've managed to get myself berthed in so that I can just jump on the boat. Dying to get in the water. As soon as I was going to, 50 mile an hour winds. Great. Nice one. Uh, John, how long did it take that big bass? Eh, uh, right. The big bass. Uh, I'll tell the story from the start to the finish. Uh, <laughs> it's it's one of them stories that I think it grows a little bit every time I tell it. This, I'll, I'll try and cut it down as much as I can. I was fishing in Portsmouth Dockyard when I was in the Navy. Coincidentally, I didn't realise until after I'd caught it and there'd been all the hoo-ha that I should have been a member of the Portsmouth Angling Club because you've got to be a member of the club to fish in the dockyard. Because I was in the Navy and I was already in the dockyard, I just thought I might as well. Um, fishing two rods, I was fishing a very cheap 
Shakespeare fixed spool rod, rod and a little spinning rod and I was I, I had a sand ale, just an ammo frozen sand ale and I had it rigged like a sidewinder so all I'd done was I just threaded a hook through the sand ale until it came out halfway and then fished it on a boom and a couple of days previous I'd been walking around on this area of the dockyard and the, the dockyard's been there for hundreds of years it's got tunnels and got bits of, that are falling all the spot I found a spot that was like a, a tunnel, a sewer pipe that had been shut off at one end so it only went in about 10 foot and I thought that is an ambush point so all I did was the next day when it was the tide was flooding in is I set up my bait and my weight so that my little sand ale that was set five foot off the bottom on a boom on a trace in a strong tide was just swimming around in front of this ambush point anyway I set it down and I'd had two bass already that day and I had a real big pouting and I was messing about and I was thinking oh this isn't gonna work I need a live bait so I was freelining ragworm with my spinning rod and I had my other rod just just propped up fishing and I thought oh I'll just try it on the rear and I, I hooked a little bass and hooked like a little scully and I thought oh, I'll go and play this so I backed the drag right off my other, rail, my other rod and tied the rod to the railings and I was busy walking away and I got about 20 yards away and was busy trying to land this fish and I looked around and Rod was just completely like that, railings were shaking, it was just all little breaking legs and I thought oh no! So I quickly like wound on the drag, kind of bounced that fish up, ran down and picked my rod up, just picked it up as quick as I could, just wound the drag up, didn't even really check it, and just struck and the rod just went and I thought oh what the is this? And it was just really heavy to start with and I thought nice one, I've caught a ray. I didn't even think in my mind how have I caught a ray on like a boom rig like that when it's off the bottom I didn't even and then as I was reeling in it was just real heavy and real sluggish and I thought that's what it is and when I looked down I don't know if any of you have been into Portsmouth the water isn't exactly crystal clear I think pea soup is closer I could see the shape in the water and it was just like a, a dark shape and I thought oh no it is it's a ray with some weed around it and when it come up it wasn't actually it was a bit of weed around the boom and I just saw this silver shape getting bigger and bigger in the water and I thought, when it finally got up to the surface it just gave one big broadside of its tail bearing in mind its tail was about that big one big flap of its tail and it was just gone it must have just been it, it maybe didn't even know it was hooked it just came up real slow to the surface and that was it gone just, even though I'd had my drag tied up tight anyone who's anyone who's got a PB fish once you've seen it you're like oh you're thinking oh god please don't let these knots fail and as it was running and I was thinking oh no I can't increase the drag anymore because I'll snap it off and it was just everything goes through your mind I don't know if I'd have uh, if I'd have played it differently if I hadn't seen it but it, to getting it to my feet again was probably 10 minutes just because it was out in the tide and I didn't want to force it and then when I got it to my feet and I realised oh crap I'm stood 12 foot up on a pier and it's down in the water and I knew it was a big fish I didn't know how big it was but I just thought what am I going to do here I can't lift it so I was looking around bearing in mind that I was in between two ships I think one of them was like a, a type what was it one of them was the new type 45 plus it might have been dragon but all I did all I ended up doing was I had to walk it about a hundred yards up and round climb over a fence and then try and land it up I think it's called the King's Steps people who know the dockyard will know where that is um, Anyway, I kind of tried to beach up these steps. The steps go down like that and I've got a flat bit and then down again. There was about six inches of water on one of these flat bits. So I kind of tried to beach it. And then I put the rod down real quick and tried to run down the steps. And the fish must have seen me coming because it just went, mm -mm. turned around and swam off and dragged the rod in the water after it. I was thinking, ah, oh, crap. So I ran in, got up to like my knees, managed to kind of get hold of the line, just handballed it in, got hold of it and just kind of like bare rugged it up to the top of the steps and uh, when I got to the top of the steps there was two old blokes stood there absolutely wetting themselves just like what are you playing at absolutely drenched with a fish slapping me all over the spot when I when I finally got up to chop I was like oh, this is massive this what am I going to do with this I thought yeah this is this is quite big I just thought I tell you what this is this is somewhat special so I, I know a friend of mine sorry there's a bloody mosquito trying to fly me here or yeah, he is my size, it could have been a seagull. There's a friend of mine who owns a tackle shop down in South Sea. So I'll give him a ring and see what he says. I'm, I didn't have any scales with me. So I phoned him up and I says, Hey mate, I says, he's still open. I says, Is there any chance I can come away a fishing? Because I know he does all the comps around there and I thought he'll maybe, I 
or maybe win a, a local prize or something. And he says, oh, yeah, yeah, what you caught? And I said, a sea bass. And he went, oh, how big is it? And I went, about 20 pounds. And he was like, oh, yeah, sure you have, mate. Bring it round. So anyway, I chucked it back at the car. I had to put, um, put two bin bags on it to, to try and stop it from messing up all the back of my car. And uh, I went, uh, I, I, bear in mind, I was just telling you, when I was unhooking it, the sand air was hooked perfectly in the scissors. It had obviously swallowed it. As I was unhooking it, and it was racking about, it spat out a pouting. Now, it was a decent-sized pouting. It'd be like a pound pouting. And it had, um, it had been in there a while. If I'd have known then how heavy the fish was and what was at stake, I'd probably try to push that pouting back down in there. <laughs> but uh, it, was just, it was just one of the things I kind of said, oh, no, never mind. Put it in the back of the car. When I drove around the south side, um, I pulled up outside of his shop and there was a couple of guys in there skigging about. And they saw me get out. When I went to the back of the car, when I got it back gills and lifted it out, when I got to up here and it was still in the car, they were all going, what? Carried it across the road. I think it measured in at somewhere like 98 centimetres but it was about that far around when I carried it in there and he put it on the scales in the shop that he wears his bait with and he just boom, bottomed out and he was like well they got a 16 pound I was like oh, that's pretty special man and he pulled one off the wall opened a packet of scales and weighed it and when he weighed it there and then it was like 20 pound 20 and a half 20 pound like 8 ounces and he used to went that's a new British record I was like don't be ridiculous he went, no, honestly, that's a British record. And I went, and I had no idea. I didn't know for a start what the British record was. And I didn't know, secondly, what my fish weighed. But I was like, oh, that's amazing. So he immediately got on the phone and was like, oh, we'll take it to the fish market and weighed. I couldn't get it properly weighed until like the, the following morning. And then as things go on, that was that. Was that. That, was, that was how it went. <laughs> if, if I could have done, I would have, if I'd have known about it, if I'd have known it was such a special fish, I would have, um, I would have tried to take it and and take it to the fish market straight away and put it in one of the live bait tanks. I would have put the live lobsters in and things like that, because that would have been a perfect fish to go to like a sea life centre or somewhere like that, somewhere a proper big breeding female. Um, I did, I did and do, um, feel a lot differently now to my fishing than I used to. It's, um, I am definitely pro catch and release now. I mean. The past time in my life, I have I've been a fisherman. I've been a commercial fisherman. I've always been into angling, like uh, amateur angling for my pleasure. But um, I have I have been salmon netting, crab potting, long lining, trawling, um, and now I think a lot of it's changed actually since I've since I've had a kid of my own. Um, it, it makes you think about it differently. But definitely, if you're seeing on my vids, I let go most of what I catch unless I'm keeping it for bait. Or unless it's deep hooked and it's gonna go to like a friend of the family or we're gonna eat it something special like like a haddock love haddock or like um, like my wife's first codling we kept that that type of thing it's um unless it's special or unless it won't go back I try to I try to get everything to go back because I've had so much fun catching it why shouldn't somebody else have the fun of catching it as well I'm gonna try and bust through some of these comments Hello from the south of France, love the videos, all the best. Well, bonjour. Uh, uh, Christ, what's Essex like to fish? I couldn't tell you too much because I've only been through there once and it was actually, uh, I was north of Essex, I was up in the wash. Uh, I've been to Norwich one time. Uh, the shore side from there, it was Pebbly from what I remember. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, I do, I know a guy there. Um, Thornback Ray's whiting this time of year. Um, you'd be lucky if you managed to scratch cuddling out. And that was to um, Matt White. Um, crikey. Why is he stepping off this? I, I'm, I'm amazed. This was... Um, the reason why I've tried doing this, I mean, I'm all for um, expanding your comfort zone. But Earl did one the other day, and I thought, oh, I'd never dare do that. But, yeah, if it, if it helps folks out. Um, John, all the best for this from Yorkshire. Phil, whereabouts in Yorkshire are you from? I mean, you can probably tell by my accent. Oh, I, I might apologise. If people don't understand me, I am Northern. I can't do subtitles, I'm afraid. Um, next time, I might get a little guy to try and give. But I'll do my best to uh, enunciate, sorry. 
Chris Burr, I like Mustard Vikings, fantastic hooks. Then, these are ones, these 14 rows. I have um, just come back from holiday in Tenerife and I've landed probably 20 stingrays over £100 on these things. Phenomenal. Um, the only thing that I don't, I, the, only, the only reason I rate the meat hooks over these ones is because the meat hooks hold a point better. I'll show you. Um, well, I, I like to be organised. I like to say, for instance, I've got all these little bags in these. I like to say, for instance, this is my shark fishing bag. This is my shark fishing bag. In it, I keep all my shark food. This is my wrecking bag. In it, I keep all my wrecking rigs. So, everything from like your wrecking rigs, which is your two hook flapper with your muppets, all the way down to your running ledger rigs. Should have some meat hooks in here somewhere. Got to find them. No, I don't. Just, <laughs> just sea beasts. Right, got one. That's your Cox and Roll sea beast. You see the difference? Just a little difference in gap. This one has got. A straighter point whereas that one hooks in these are real good if you get snagged up you can sometimes bounce them out because it is quite springy but you lose your point on these more than these um, Bernard uh, yeah you did see my picture in Sea Angler they must be running out of <laughs> decent stuff to print if they're printing my ugly mud um, Finn Roberts thanks for the jumper no problem pal. I'll tell you what, that was an unbelievable uh, bit of luck. There was, uh, I don't know if you've noticed on Facebook the other day, uh, I was uh, trailing the boat back from a fishing session and uh, I had a blowout, worst possible place, like the only bit of dual carriageway that I cover and it was right on like a blind bend and I had a blowout on a trailer. Unreal. Anyway, I tried to get it up on a curve. Drivers are just lunatics. Luckily enough as it was, a policeman come past and kind of took pity on me and uh, put some cones out so he put his car up up from man had the flashing lights on and putting cones out bearing in mind he was wearing a yellow jacket and he's a policeman next to a police car he put a cone down on the road and some loony sped past him that close hit the cone i mean as if you couldn't see him anyway this this fella that stopped and, and took pity on me it turns out that he um, when he first rocked up I was like, all right, here we go. And he went, oh, Mr. Fishlocker. And I was like, what? How was that? Turns out that him and his lad uh, really like the videos. They're local and like fishing. So I um, I did I did the very least that I could and uh, sent him a, a lucky hoodie. Hopefully, it will find you a bass this year. Uh, I went into town earlier on with his son to go and uh, to go and pick up some bits and bobs and uh, bumped into him straight away. And he was wearing a hoodie. I thought it was fantastic. It's, it's a bit surreal. Um, my leads tub weighs more than your whole box, Paul Tyson. Yes, that's kind of my point. Um, when I go off on the boat, it's different. I mean, I'm not going to show you all my workshop because it's a bit of a mess, but this is generally my ledge tub for the boat. And that's it. Easy, easy to just put them straight on the boat. And uh, the fantastic world of fishing. Evening, lad. Hello from Scotland, Colin McGregor. Whereabouts in Scotland are you from, mate? I'm um, I'm going up with Kev McKee on the, uh, the end of April, start of May, skate fishing. Um, I've been up there before. I went up out of Oban with uh, Roger Eaton on Bluefin. Me and my wife went for. Uh, she'll probably correct me, but I think it was our anniversary. We we generally celebrate big things like birthdays and anniversaries with fishing trips. She enjoys it, but she didn't have much of a choice either. Uh, yeah, my first fish, two hundred and seven pound. Her first fish, one hundred and seventeen pound. Boom, amazing. Um, Gabby McNamara, that rail looks the nuts. Which one, the spin fisher or the other cheaper one? Send me a message. Uh, I've just done a review of the spin fisher. I try and be as honest as I can in my videos, and like as now, uh, there's no point not being honest. 
all the all the gear that you see apart from like so that rod what i won it i've bought it all so why wouldn't i give you an honest review um john you never use a rag do you ever do overnighters in the boat i haven't but i haven't had this boat over long i've only had this boat for a year and a half and to be honest i don't think my wife would like it she worries i don't know why but uh, i have seriously considered it one of the only uh, one of the only things that kind of stops me is it's not so much that i worry about my own safety i don't always trust other people now um, even though i've got navigation lights it's not to say that someone wouldn't bang into you now earlier on this year sorry i say this year last year I took me and my daughter out we went out shark fishing and we steamed out went out in darkness uh, steaming along the bay i've got all my lights on anyway just she and we both had life jackets on busy going on our way flat calm doing about 10 knots put me head up every now and again i look around and i just kind of thought we were sat down and i was looking ahead of us and I just thought, I'll just put my head up like that. And just as I looked up, steaming down on us, bearing in mind that I was a stand-on vessel, steaming down on us at full max chat was a commercial boat. And, and literally, it was seconds away. All I had to do was, as soon as I saw it, pulled the wheel hard over. And then within, like, two seconds, we were five foot apart, side by side. So as I turned, he just kept on going. And he didn't even break, didn't he? And he, it turns out he was, he was on the deck, sorting pots. Didn't see me, didn't even know I was there. He would have gone straight over the top of us. That's why I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive. In shore, it'll be fine. In shore, like the spots where you see me fishing for days. But they're, um, they're good enough during the day. The only, the only places where I'd think about going overnight would be to maybe try a wreck or something like that. Let's have a look and see what else. Does the weather ever put you off, John? It's going to be really windy tomorrow, so I'm giving it a miss this weekend from Dodgy Dave. Um, I do I'm definitely becoming more of a fair weather fisherman now than I was. Um, the only thing that really puts me off is the rain. I don't like being wet. The wind is annoying, but one of the really lucky things about being down here in the southwest of Cornwall is no matter what direction the wind is, you're only 20 minutes away from another coast. If it's like as now, if it's coming in westerly, we'll just fish on the east side of the lizard. If it's coming in southerly, you've always got the north coast. If it's coming in northerly, you've always got the south coast. It's great. And one of the beauties of like the Carrick's Roads, which is like Falmouth, Myler, St. Just, St. Moors, you'll always find decent fishing and sheltered fishing. Um, <laughs> Andy Gorrit. Yeah, go on, John. Andy Gorrit is a great fisherman. Loves catching, fl uh, catching flubbers. Flubbers to the normal person is a pouting. He's, um, he's fished me a couple of times in the uh, British Congo Club. We're, uh, we're actually going out with Kev for uh, Big Sharks this year. So, we'll see. Andy Scott, evening John, really enjoy the boat vids. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much mate. I will do more as soon as I can get out. Brochure. <laughs> Dan Walbridge, what idiot are you meeting tomorrow? God, I don't know. It must be a lunatic. It must be an absolute lunatic. The guy that I'm meeting tomorrow has just driven like a two hour round trip to pick up a dozen lugworm. I must have a scroll out. Um, Remy, great story in the bus, mate. You certainly deserve that landing. You need to take me fishing one day. Lots of species don't catch a break. Remy Noftel has just said about that bass. This guy is like the bass whisperer. He could fall in the harbour and he'd come out with a double figure bass. He's, he's exceptional at bass fishing. He's, um, he's one of the contributors to uh, what was Black Tide. Now, you will be seeing more from the contributors of what was previously Black Tide, but that's yet to be released. Um, enjoy the show, buddy. Keep up with the work. Thank you very much. You ever fished South Wales? No, I haven't. But one of the funny things, well, I, it's quite strange when I'm sounding like I do and looking like I do when I came down here, I didn't get met with open arms from the locals. Um, it's only really now since I've, since they know that I'm down here to stay and since they, they kind of understand my, understand the things that I'm saying that we get any cross talk. When I tried asking them for marks when I first come down here, it was like talking to that wall over there. You just get nothing. 
But one guy did come and talk to me and my wife, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you won't catch no around here. You need to go to Wales. That's where all the fish are. And we're like, what? <laughs> yeah, apparently there's no fish anywhere but Wales. So I will try fishing in Wales at some point. Probably four top. Uh, you're doing great, mate. Just imagine we're all naked, Brian. Well, considering that I've just scrolled through and there's probably 40 blokes on there, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll ward. Stingray, Stingray, bring us the film. Um, I can't, I'm afraid, because I didn't make a film. Uh, what I have got is I've got some fantastic underwater footage from the GoPro when I was out there. The only problem being is the hard drive that it was all on got damaged. So it's away trying to be recovered. If we get it recovered, I'll put some underwater footage in. It's got amazing, it's got triggerfish, damselfish, it's got four or five types of brain, it's got stingrays, it's got cow nose rays, it's got more eels, it's, it's amazing. Uh, You took your rods to St Michael's Mount once. Wanted to fish the back of it. The guy in the chaos confiscated my spinning rod. I think I had a lashed him with my spinning rod. I went live for a bit last night. I get nervous going live. I was really nervous to start with. I was panicking. And my wife will know that I was I was a loony when I was just like 10 minutes ago. I was like, go on, help me, don't do this, do that. And then now I've started, I've just realised, well actually, it's just me on my own in my workshop talking to myself. About some Tenerife, um, well, down near Las Americas, but at one point I did fish up in uh, up near Santa Cruz. One of the things that people that they won't tell you when you're swimming at the beaches in Tenerife is uh, there are hammerhead sharks. I did catch a hammerhead shark there on a hand line on a homemade hook a couple of years ago when I was on boat. I was um, I was working on a boat that was up there, and I set like a little hand line up. I made a hook in like the welder's shop, and I caught a five foot hammerhead shark on it. And we were only anchored 200 yards off the beach. So, yeah. Um, both of us uh, and your future grim cleats will be loving the salty syrup. <laughs> Thanks, John. Philip Shaw says you've retracted a message. I can, only, I can only guess what you've... Oh, the fish locker. Do you want a sandwich? Darling, I would love a sandwich. Um, raspberry jam, please. Uh, FB, I want a fish locker hoodie. Well, there is a link on the Facebook page to buy one. If you save me from a near death experience, I'll give you one. I'm from Ull. I love watching your videos, really helpful. I mean, uh, yeah. Scott Senior. I've, I've had a lot of people contact me saying exactly the same thing. There was, there was quite a few gents that say, um, I'm mad for a fishing but just cannot get out there anymore. Now, as has happened, as has happened in my own family with my own family members, the, the, what they want to do and what they can do are two different things. If my videos are helping you in any way at all, I am really, it's, it's the very least I could do. If, um, I've, I've tried to make my videos as if like I'm just talking to a mate of mine that stood next to me while I'm fishing. Uh, there's a few people that's contacted me that's just said thank you for that and thank you for taking me with you because that's what I try and do if if there's anything that you would like to see if there was any type of um, tips or hints or questions or anything like that that you want to see or you want to know or that I could help with let me know if I don't know chances are I will know somebody who does know just stay in touch best thing you can probably do is uh, send me a private message on the fish locker Facebook page <laughs> Rob Booth, the missus ain't giving you a thumbs down yet. Ever fished North Wales, Anglesey? No. Same as I said for South Wales, but I would like to. Um, so many places I want to go fishing. It's just I want to be fishing everywhere at all times. Um, I did set some targets for myself this year. I do hope to um, to fish Chesil at some point. I've always kind of put it off, but it was just because it was him. Um, I think people, when they think of Chesil, they think everybody catches double figure fish all the time. I looked at it objectively and I thought it's a massive beach that gets a massive amount of effort. Thank you. I think my sandwich has arrived. Uh, Alan Cook, I join enjoying your live stream from Cumbria. Amazing, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sorry, Alan. I'll, I'll try and put you and Earl together because he's up in Cumbria as well. Um, 
if you two can't speak through this, I'll make the introductions later on. Um, Earl McShane, who has got gone fishing, give him a message. He'll, if you can get fishing together, he does videos like Ado as well. Yeah, really straightforward, really down to earth. He's um, getting stuck in. He's he's trying to catch a conger this year. He might come down, and if he does, I'll I'll take him out on a boat and get one, and I'll, I'll try and get him one from the shore as well. I'm a bit spoiled in the area that I am, but we've got that many species at hand. John Keithley near Bradford. Funny enough, actually, um, my family's from near there. My mum's side of the family, anyway. Um, make sure you film your Scots run, blah, blah. Right. I'm not the only person on the boat for this fishing up in Scotland. What I might try and do is I might take my cameras with me because I'm flying, so I cannot take all my gear with me. I'm using what gears on the boat. Um, if I can take a little bit of gear with me, I might try and do a shore session for one. But on the boat, there's four other anglers. Not only will it not be the same type of format as what I like my videos to be, which is um, me sharing my knowledge, sharing my my lessons learned, my whatever whatever I get through, just talking you through it. It will be me fishing on a charter boat. That isn't the type of videos that I, I, I do because I think they're a, they're a different type of format. Um, there will probably be pictures, and I will give you a report. I am looking at the logistics of taking my own boat up there and fishing for skate. If I do do that, the only problem with that being is it's like a 10 hour drive trailer in a boat as well. If I do do that, there will definitely be at least one video. Uh, hi Jim, what makes a braid on a spinfisher? The braid on the spinfisher I think is, um, oh God, is it live fire or something like that? It's Berkeley. It's not the stuff that I usually use. Usually, the stuff that I usually use is either Power Pro or this Daiwa J braid. Now, this this stuff here, fantastic. It's expensive. Now, the reason I've got this on Sharky reel. This stuff here, I don't know if you guys have, have ever come across this before, this Spectra stuff. This is what I have on my multiplier reels for the boat for when I'm fishing for Congress. Uh, I like multicolours because you can see how much line's gone past. The only time that really matters is when you want to know what depth you're at or if you've got a shark or something where it's running so you want to know how much line's gone. If you've just got green line, it could be 10 yards, it could be 200 yards, you can't tell. Whereas if you know that it's a different colour every five metres, green, yellow, blue, red, green, yellow, right, seven, right, that's how far it's gone. This stuff, Spectra, is from China. It is cheap. This is 300 metres of 70 pound and I think it cost me about four quid. Now, it does take like six weeks to get here. It takes just long enough that you think it's never going to arrive, and then it arrives. Now, it is very thick. You will not get low diameter with this stuff, but you could anchor a boat with it. It says £70 on there. It's probably more like £90. I've got that on my um, on my big reel. I think it's a TLD 20. Um, Lee Garner, are you planning on doing any more course fishing? Yes, I am. Well... Fingers crossed, if the weather plays ball and I get a uh, pass, I will be going uh, fishing at a friend's lake. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, fishing for pike. But, I don't know, I'm, I'm on a quest for a, a decent perch. Now, that's what we're going for. He said that, there's been, said that the pike have been spawning recently and they might be on the feed. I would like to, I would love to catch one because I haven't had a decent pike in this garden in what, the past 12 months. But, I'll take whatever's going. I did have a great session the other day down at BK Fisheries, the video's up, where I got a PB Roach and uh, one of the sessions before then when I fished Paw and I got a PB Bream. Um, I've, I've had a great like past 12 months fishing, it's been fantastic. Uh, Scott, yes it is nervous to go live for it, um, I have to get my girlfriend to read the comments as I'm dyslexic. Yeah, and not only doesn't help, it's like a, an ant's written in. Eddie, hi, so live, hi from Liverpool. How are you going, mate? You alright? Um, I fished up in the Mersey a couple of years ago, uh, Perch Rock and Town Hall Steps for a competition with the Navy. It was, um, I fished it, it fished its nuts off. I was, I was amazed, considering the colour of the water. Uh, a tide, I was down here, we were looking at, I don't know, at the moment it's slack tides, you're looking at probably two and a half metres between high and low. 
big tides, you're looking at probably four and a half, possibly five metres. The tide flow that you got in there was just ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. At one tide was running, if you did any more than like a 40 yard cast and you didn't slowly wind like that, you were just buried immediately. Great catches of waiting and dabs. Yeah, some big flounders as well. Uh, what part of the north are you from? Uh, all over. I'm not, I was um, born Durham, lived Whitby, and then God, for the past 10 or 12 years, I haven't lived up there because um, moving away. I've lived all over. Um, my accent is unusual because I've, I've lived and worked so many places. Everyone down here thinks I'm a Geordie and everyone up north thinks I've turned into some soft southerner. Um, I'm just sorry, I'm trying to flick through some of these. Um, have you ever fished off New Cave shore and boat? Shore, yes, boat, no. I actually have a video that uh, my better half is editing as we speak from a night session up there. It wasn't a fantastic session. Um, I won't spoil it all for you. There were no record breaking fishing there, but hopefully there will be some hints and tips and little bits of useful information. Uh, Pat Bot, no problem at all, mate. I'm really glad you're enjoying the videos. Uh, thanks for the story in the bass, Mr. Locker. What was the official weight the next morning? Fish chairs at the time. Um, when, it was, when it was actually weighed, like the, the next morning it had lost a few ounces. So like I say, on the night, on the day that I caught it, it was over 20 pound after it spat that fish out. Then the next day when it got when it got measured, it was it was like 19, 14. And then when the, I had to, it was unbelievable how it, how it ended up coming about. I had to uh, sign an affidavit uh, in front of a magistrate to say that I'd caught the fish by fair means because I caught it by myself and there was no witnesses. I had to get someone, I had to send scales of it to the National History Museum to get them to verify that it was a bass and not a hybrid. And then I had to get someone from Weights and Measures from HMRC to come down and verify the scales. So I had to pay for someone to come and verify the scales. In which time the um, scales were right. They were, they were on a fish market. Um, we'd weighed it, the scales weighed it decimalised. So it was a conversion into pounds and ounces for the record. The guy who came from HMRC weighed it in grams and then had to convert it into pounds and ounces. The smallest denomination that he had at the time with him was 50 grams. So whatever it was, he had to round it down by 50 grams. And then decimalization, sorry, with the conversion from decimal to imperial, he rounded it down again. So whereas the fish on the scales, you could see it said £19.13.8, which is what Sea Angler have recorded it at, because the guy from Sea Angler was there and took a photo of the scales. The record is £19.12. ounces. That was what, after all the, after all the, the weight they took off it for the, the conversions and for the for the possible disparities in the in the weights. It is what it is. Hi John, I'm in Plymouth. Would you ever do a session where people can come along and have a fish here? I would love to, mate. I'm just worried that someone will come and turf me in. Uh, I'm actually thinking about going to Plymouth. I would like to have a go at fishing for a big eel down there. I hear that you guys know where they are. Uh, Devil's Point areas like that. I keep hearing great things. Um, my wife and daughter inside are probably thinking they're really funny. I haven't even had a chance to eat my sandwich yet. Um, hi from Wiltshire. Really enjoying your videos. Thanks a lot. No problem at all. Like I say, um, if there's any way that I can help, any way that I can um, help you enjoy yourself, if there's anything that I've learned, even if it's, it might not be stuff to do, it might not be, it might be stuff not to do. It might just be, if you're going to buy this rod, if I've ever bought it before in the past and I know a little bit about it, I might be able to tell you about it. If I don't, I might know someone or anything like that. If you get in touch with me, if I don't know, I might know someone who does. Um, out with Forrester, end of the month, Torquay, after a record pollock, we'll be wearing an open fish logo hoodie. Yes. Don't forget you have to little prayer before you go out there otherwise it doesn't work do I ever watch other channels such as TA fishing um, I did in the past the um, Graham Pullen's knowledge is phenomenal he's been fishing for twice as long as I've been alive and um, the only thing that that kind of stopped me watching him was because it's um, I think he saw that it was becoming uh, 
more lucrative for him to just be people watching him because he was a character. Uh, the earlier videos that you see, he imparted more knowledge. He, he was it was a fishing video. Now, when he's been going to like the full hour long sessions, not only do I not have enough time in my life to be able to watch a full hour session, but there is less fishing involved. Um, that's the only reason. And not only that, it takes me so long to to get on top of replying to comments uh, or messages and uploading my own videos and going fishing. I just don't have the time. There, there are probably probably half a dozen people that I watch a lot. Um, I'm not going to tell you who they are. I'm going to keep it secret. Good luck, big S, on the Pollock. Um, how are you fishing? Are you fishing live baits? Are you fishing rubber, rubbers? Are you fishing metals? I've been having a lot of success recently on slow jigs. Slow jigs with the cyst hooks. Um, I've, I've just put a post up recently. I've got some fantastic ones from uh, Mental Metals. He's a local guy down here. He's, he's mad for his low fishing as well. But they are the, I like the 100 gram ones. Uh, four row assist hooks as well. They've been they've set me fine. Go argle for pike. Uh, I've heard actually that argle's not the best. I've heard that they're more small. They're like most of them are jacks. Um, but I might be wrong. You might know more than I do. I've I've had a walk around a lot of the little venues and I talked to a lot of the people that are fishing there. Stuart Allen message retracted. Uh, have you ever used the flood and maximus talk to No, I haven't. But uh, there was one on the charter boat. I, think I don't know where these mosquitoes are coming from. One of them on the charter boat in my local town that I fish from quite a lot, and he got given one by Fladden. And I tell you what, it's um, he put he put it through its paces. It bends all the way to like it's like a piece of spaghetti when you get a good piece of fish on. But I tell you what, it gives some stick as well. Uh, it's an absolutely brilliant blank. It's amazing bite detection. Yeah, well, exactly like I've just said. I've never used it, but I've seen it in action, and they do look great. Uh, I got a. I got a flat next reflex a while ago and it was just exactly the same. You could you could literally you could almost turn it into a pig's tail and it would never snap. Um Lee Garner watched the BK one, it was great stuff. Adding to adding a trip to BK hopefully. Definitely give Billy a message. He'll tell you what's on at the time. Even if you give him a message a couple of days in advance, he'll say, Oh yeah, like the roach are on or the carp are in the shallows or he's spot on right now. Uh, where's the pierce? Hey bud. No mate. Uh, what happened to the tackle shops in Choro? Tackle shops, like everywhere, are dying, and it's because people are buying stuff online. Most of the tackle shops now, um, the only, well, Lizard Tackle and Bait is one of the main ones that's down here, and he's about 50 miles away from me. And the only reason that he can keep going like he does is because he does so much stuff online. Tackle shops now, they haven't got tackle anymore, they might as well just be bait shops because everyone buys their tackle online. It's, it's one of the reasons why I like to keep my money local if I can, just because. It used to be a fantastic place to get all your fishing knowledge as well, didn't it? Because everyone going in there buying bait would talk about, now we'll just all do it online. The tackle shop in Truro, County Angler, that's gone. Uh, the guy, Aaron, who used to work there, he's working at uh, Gunnear, which is a coarse fishing spot up in um, up near UK. He's, he's making his rods up there, and the other lad, Rich, he's, uh, he's doing something else now. The, the one that was uh, in Helston, that's gone. The one that was in Falmouth, uh, that's gone. The only, you know, the only really ones there are Newtown, which is near Pry Sands, um, and Lizard Tackle and Bait, which is down the Lizard. John Warwick, how many rods can you use in the UK? As many as you can carry. Uh, there, I'm, and I'm saying that, I'm pretty sure there's something niggling me in the back of my mind saying that there is a rule, uh, it might be a local bylaw in the North East saying about fishing for bass and it might be a, there's a limit to number of rods and the reason for that was is there was um, there was a court case came about and there was a guy using like seven rods all at once and they were landing small bass. Don't quote me, um, something in my mind tells me that but as for boat fishing on your, on your own, no. Or if I was going to go down on the beach, because I'm just fishing for myself and because I'm not fishing in a club that has a rule, I could use six rods if I wanted to. If you've got six fish on at once, you'd be in a, you'd be in a nightmare. But yeah, you can use as many as you want. Uh, 10 metre plus in the Mersey down south is a bit like fishing in the med. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, fishing in the med, you're lucky if you get like three feet from high to low. Colin Bright. No, sorry, Colin Blight. 
you'll have to give me a shout. We'll uh, we'll see about getting out fishing sometime. It says he lives in Truro. Uh, Wait, Mrs. edits your videos. Is that true? Yes, she does. Uh, it's the only way that we find the time, and she's um, she's great at it. She uh, knows perfectly how to edit out all my swear words. Uh, have you accidentally hooked a bluefin down south? Yes. Uh, five hours later, it was at the boat. Uh, very, very happy accident, but left two anglers absolutely broken. Oh, uh, coincidentally, I have uh, a brand new eight pound stand up stick and uh, a large Tiagra for my shark fishing this year. Should it happen again? Oh, Wesley Pierce. How are you going, mate? I was just talking to my wife about you earlier on. Wesley Pierce, he's, he's like a BFG. I swear he's about seven foot tall. A uh, friend of mine, South Africa. I want to go down there fishing with him sometime. He was telling me about the fishing down there and I was getting a little bit jealous to be honest. Uh, as mentioned, here are naturally in front of the camera. I'm not sure about that. If you fancy a trip up here, mate, give me a message. Yes, yes. Uh, my wife's got some appointments coming up in um, in Plymouth in the future. I will we'll probably make a couple of days of it actually. Dodger Dave, how old are you, John? And when did you start fishing? What introduced you to the sport? I'm in my 30s. Uh, I'm from a fishing family in a fishing town, so it's always been in my blood. Um, my granddad, his granddad. The fishing fleet in Whitby, unfortunately, is not what it once was. Um, but I've always loved fishing. Always, any any type of fishing, anything, uh, freshwater, saltwater, fly fishing. Uh, fly fishing is the only one that I'm not not okay at. The only rod that I've ever broken in anger actually was a fly rod. Um, <laughs> got on this river, got on the local river esque, and it was a, a free stretch of pole, and it was just coming down to dark, and I was just landing these casts perfectly, and that fish just started moving out of the pole, and that was it. Front, pulled back, just ready to launch, took it a bush, crap, freed it up, just getting out, perfect, just landed it right next to it, struck and missed. Well, second one, hit back of my ear, next one, hit back of my coat, and that was it. I was fished all around my feet, and I couldn't get a fly out. <laughs> Best thing about it was, it wasn't even my rod, it was my brother's. You have a seven pound first cast? Right, Argyle. Argyle's the place then. I'll, I'll have a walk around there in the next couple of days and wreck it out. Unless you could, unless you can give me some inside, in, inside info as to where the swims are best. Please send me a PM, that would be fantastic. Um, I've always been into wildlife, I've always been into the outdoors. When I was a kid, like when I was a little kid at school and all the kids were like, oh I want to be a footballer and oh I want to be a an astronaut. I wanted to be David Attenborough. I wanted to be a marine biologist and then as time went on I kind of realised that um, <laughs> funny enough when I when I was going to go to university I knew that I wasn't suited for university. I was better going to work so I've just always kept up my fishing. I love it. My, my brothers are into it as well and um, I was lucky enough to find find a woman that was into fishing as well. That was a great, that's a great story actually my wife. Um, when we first met I kind of said, oh yeah, well I'm into fishing. I don't think she really understood what it meant when I said, oh, I'm, I'm into fishing. After a, after a couple of months, she realised, crap, I'm going to have to start going fishing, otherwise I'm never going to see him again. I got talking to um, to my wife's dad, and uh, it turned out that he had a, a share in an oyster punt, a 14-foot oyster punt. And uh, I said, oh, well, do you mind if I borrow it? So I took took my wife out, and bearing in mind, it's got no electronics at all. It just had like a set of oars, it had like a four horsepower single engine on it. And all I had was a couple of little bits of rods. So I got an admiralty chart and I had a look on, on places where I thought looked fishy just by the by the topography. And I made some line of sight bearings to just roughly get me in the right area and I took her out. And in that day we had about 300 fish, pollock, wrasse, mackerel, bass, gurnards, three types of wrasse, uh, dogfish, bullus, we had it all. And at the same time we had uh, like two minky whales surface right next to the boat and I mean when I say surface next to the boat we were busy fishing and we just heard this <laughs> look around and we're like oh, that sounds like a whale like literally 10 feet away there was a whale that was bigger than the boat and it was cl that clear that it come underneath the boat like that when we looked under we could see it underneath when it come up the other side and it was, it was amazing it was um, not from then she was hooked 
she's keen for it now all the time. We go shark fishing, we've been skate fishing, we've been fishing all over the world, we're fishing in Mexico. Um, if you want to come to my neck of the woods, John, we get some monster sea bass here in Birmingham. Right. Uh, enjoying the good, enjoying this good work, fella. Thank you. Uh, still a type of shop in Hill, John. I think is it Hill. Is that the uh, the other side of County Angler? Are you going to be doing any shark fishing from your own boat this year, Rob Booth? Yes, yes, one hundred times yes. I am really going to be hitting it hard. I wanted to be getting out after a poor beagle, but this weather has put kibosh and all that. But I will definitely be uh, doing a couple of videos there. I'll only be taking a hundred pound shark from my own boat this year. I've had a couple that size. Uh, I had a cracking poor beagle this year as well, down out of Penzance, but okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to be really eating them. We only did, I only did two sessions this year for one. And I hooked the poor beagle underneath the boat, went on a deep rope, and only had it on for about 10 seconds. And then I, I had three little blues when I was out with my daughter. That day when I said we nearly got run down, we had three little blues. Biggest was about 30 pounds. But the weather was that bad, the wind was that bad by the end of the day, the audio was just not usable. There is a small clip of it in my um, best of 2018 video where uh, you see me with like a 30 pound shark. Uh, if you're not going to eat that sandwich, I'll have it. I know. <laughs> uh, keep the content quality. Some YouTubers are chucking out rubbish to just say they have a video each week. That's th there was going to be a video today, which is the one, like I said, she's editing now, but I thought I would give this a try instead. Um, what's the knot you use most for tying your rigs? Um, it depends. I've, I've talked through quite a few of them. If I'm, um, if it's if it's a knot that I'm not so worried about the size of, and it's to something like a lead or like a big swivel, when I'm conga fishing, and it doesn't matter about it being a, being a big knot, you will not go wrong with a Palomar knot. One of the strongest knots you'll ever make. Uh, if it's going to a hook, I like to use a uni knot, and that's because it doesn't tighten around the bend, it tightens around the line and then slides down. Whereas like a blood knot can sometimes nip, a uni knot won't. Um, and quite a lot when I'm making rigs, like you'll have seen in a lot of my videos, I use blood loops, blood knots. So like a twisted boom blood knot, like for my um, homemade feathers video, or like when I'm making a two down rig, which is one of these. Oh, that was it, I was going to say, I haven't even put the hooks in that in my bag. I, I am quite organised. My wife won't agree, but I am. That's how I keep my sea fishing stuff. And this is how I keep my shore fishing stuff. So when I'm going out on the boat, I know, right, I'm going anchoring up and I'm going to fish for rays. So I want some at this size and some at this size and some at this size. So it goes all the way from small to big. So straight away I can pick these out. And I know these are 402 hook rigs. Or these are like place rigs. And the same way that when I'm going off the shore, I'll be right, right, like tomorrow. I'm going to be fishing a little bit on the a little bit on the sand, so I'm going to want some Wessex rigs. So I'll just flip through three up flapper rigs, Wessex rigs, and I want to want me up and over rigs. So there we go, pulley rigs, everything. One up part the scratching rigs, two up float scratching. Rigs. All I've done is when I've got a little bit of time, like when the, when the weather's bad and you can't go fishing, I'll make them up. So all I'll do is I think, right, if I get the opportunity of a weather window or the missus says, yeah, you can go, run straight in there, get a bag, bang, 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 chuck five or six rigs in there and you're ready to go. A little bit of preparation ahead of time really does help you out, especially when you're, um, when you're fishing on a small boat. Kayak anglers, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We are running out of battery, so I'm not going to be able to do this for over a much longer. Let's see if I can get a little battery pack on here. I don't even know how long she's been going for. You know, you're organising the garage and with your fishing stuff, complete plus. Thank you, my love. What lever drag reel under 150 would you recommend? One moment. Right. To 
depends what you're fishing for to start with. Now, bearing in mind, this will give you some type of idea of the type of person I am. I still have the original boxes for all of my reels. I have had this one, uh, God, probably 20, 2010 was when I got this. TLD 20A, two speed. Fantastic. And on this I have some of this braid. Well actually it's not that braid, it is. It is this braid. But you can get like this 1500 metres of this and it's about 20 quid. And uh, I've got, I think I've got an 80 pound mono leader on there. These are exceptional. I've had um, 50 pound conger eels, um, 30 pound ling, blue sharks. Uh, this will take a skate. It will, I know it will. Yeah, you can't not fall off on these and they're about 100 quid. Um, what's even better is most of the stuff that I get now, because, because I've got everything that I really need, if I'm ever gonna buy anything, it's just a luxury. I can afford to wait. So I look around on, on things like eBay and on Facebook Marketplace and that. Uh, I got this, and this is a very special reel, a Tiagra. Now, uh, I bought them second hand off a bloke, I bought two. I bought this one, I think this is a 16, is it? Yeah, and the other one's a, a 30. But yeah, second hand and a cracking. Those, if you're buying brand new, will be very expensive. I bought it second hand, so it wasn't. Um, this is a star drag, but these are one as well that I would keep my eye out for if I were you, because they're absolutely bomb. This is a Daiwa Slosh 30. I use them a lot in my boat fishing. Um, you can go with... Generally what I will do is I will find a brand that I like, I will find something that I like, that I trust, that I have faith in, and I won't go far from it. Now, Shimano's are brilliant. The, them rods are Shimano's, that's a Shimano. I've got one of the Shimano reel, I think, other than the Tiagras. Shimano's are good. Um, I don't think you'll fall off with a Shimano. Um, lever drags, some people like them, some people don't. Definitely for things that you, when you're fishing for a big fish that's going to run or that you need to increase the drag quickly whilst holding pressure, lever drag's great. Uh, for your inshore stuff, star drag's fine. What have we got here? Right. Uh, it's the same living home when you have a big fishing industry and we don't have much now. I, when I was um, I was working as a fisheries officer, don't hate me, uh, for in the North East, and we spent a bit of time down on Donanook and Humber. Uh, I understand exactly what you're talking about, hole in Green's Bay. Uh, what job do you do now, John? Not very much at all. I just uh, do as little as possible to be able to keep me fishing. Uh, is doing YouTube with your job now? I only wish, I only wish it was, mate. Um, brilliant fish locker, thank you very much. I'm glad, I'm glad really people, I'm really, really glad people are enjoying this. Um, I was, like I say, I was panicking. Weather-wise, what's the biggest gust you go out in, 20 mile per hour? Is there a wind speed you won't go out in? On the boat, um, if someone asked me this the other day and it was a, a fellow going out in his kayak. Now, um, people who, who, who weren't brought up with the sea. Uh, also, people need to understand that when it says gale force 8, it doesn't mean 8 miles an hour. It means gale force 8. Now, the Beaufort scale, they classify it differently. Like, 0 could be 0 to 5 mile an hour. Gale force 1 could be 5 to 10. Look it up you wouldn't go out in a gale force five it doesn't mean five miles an hour um i've been out in some really really poor weather i've been caught out in some really poor weather um this boat them orkneys i love orkneys because they are pretty much unsinkable touch wood um in my local area pretty much everything is fine it just gets uncomfortable the only weather that is bad is easterly 
because it builds the swell around here and it's just horrible it's like that real sloppy swell uh, Wesley you'll know what I mean down there you have like a long swell a great longer wavelength swell where you just kind of like it's not too bad around here but um, definitely if I'm checking my kids out nothing above uh, 10 to 15 mile an hour and that's because and I never go far offshore when I've got kids with me either Rob Mansfield sends a private message my wife will sort you out straight away um, <laughs> Andy Scott yeah well, it makes a change from doing it to me face if you had to choose between shore and boat fishing which would be your favourite um, I love my boat fishing I love it It's I just like being at sea every job I've ever had I've always been at sea uh, I've always lived by the sea the small amount of time when I didn't live by the sea I was constantly pining for it it was horrible lived in Leeds for a while I didn't just live in Leeds I lived in Batley you know like a while ago when that MP got stabbed in the street that was about 200 yards from where we lived it was horrendous um, shore fishing there's bits of shore fishing that I love that I think oh that was brilliant I've had a brilliant session like a couple I've been lucky a couple of the sessions that I've recorded uh, one of them is bass fishing on a float with prawn I love that or uh, just ras fishing with ragworm and just like pat monsters or um, I'm not not a massive fan of beach fishing that's just because you get sand everywhere <laughs> but boat fishing I just love it uh, something about being on the water and the access to all the different fish if you if you know how to if you know how to find them if you know how to put the work in I'm constantly learning as well boat fishing is the way forward could you advertise these live chats in advance from YouTube Stephen Fife may I will do if I'm gonna do them again this really was just a tester this is the first one I've ever done we weren't even sure it was gonna work um, I put a little thing up yesterday I didn't want to like mega publicize it in case I naffed it up and I had to go oh, I'm sorry I, I can't do it now um, hope you now realize you're connecting with the wranglers top streaming spot on mate Graham I'm, I'm always just at the end of a message what I might start doing now is because I've got one or two people that I think must be working night shifts they think that they can message me at midnight and one o'clock in the morning and it won't annoy my wife when my phone goes off now she stopped thinking it was another woman and now she just calls it my fishing boyfriend um, we all wish that's my dream to be YouTube full time uh, I don't know if I'd be able to do it full time and it pay my bills because I would have to I would have to sell out I would have to be sponsored I would have to be plugging someone's gear all the time I would have to have like SAA and, and all sort and like I'm using that as an example he's got about 10 different sponsors all over him whereas I've just got me because it's just me now if, if I was sponsored enough to be able to pay me mortgage they would probably start dictating what I showed what I filmed what I did what I said and I think that would detract from the quality that you guys enjoy, that I enjoy making, that we enjoy sharing. But hopefully, I mean, at the moment, I'll be lucky if it pays, if it pays for a tank of petrol every every two months. But um, I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it for my love of doing it. When I stop enjoying it, I'll stop doing it. As long as I keep enjoying it, and as long as people keep enjoying it, I will try my very best to keep it going. Um, Earl, you were putting yourself down, mate. I will talk to you later. Big eye from Liverpool. <laughs> uh, I think that my, my missus is enjoying slagging me off and having a bit of crap with all you lads anyway. Just don't expect her to be posting any pictures of her in the bath. Uh, Ray F. Um, out in Lanzarote, I'm jealous. Uh, I have a couple of videos done in Gran Canaria that might help you out. I would just recommend small looks, small squid baits, or small bits of pro. Like when I say small looks, I mean small looks. Um, scratching around, there's tons. There's ten or fifteen different species of bream. There's uh, red porgies, there's coach, uh, dentex, there's saddled annular, uh, tooth banded sea breams, there's uh, axillary breams, there's 
uh, three types of trigger fish, two types of reticulated bream, uh, two types of reticulated file fish, five types of wrasse, wide-eyed flounders, all there for you, mate. Remy, I will look at doing it again. It's it's been a success, and like I say, I was really worried at the start, but it's I'm not as worried now. Uh, you caught on a fresh chicken breast in Lanzarote. I once caught a uh, I once caught the best codling of the day when I was fishing out in Whitby with an old boy called Phil Green when I was when I was only a kid when I was about twelve year old. Um, on a blackcurrant chew it, like like a chew it. I unwrapped it and stuck it on the hook, cast it out, and straight away it was like a five pound codling, best fish we had that day. And I also I caught a bass in Portsmouth, Portsmouth dockyard on a chicken drumstick, like a proper. I think it was like spicy. Uh, is your wife a true pro <laughs> fishing permission officer? She's great, but I guess she knows if I'm out fishing, I'm not out in the, I'm not out boozing. Uh, hi mate, I thought I'd missed you. Hope you're well, Portsmouth angler. I'm just on here, mate, but I don't think I want to be on here for long. Uh, Christ, we've been on here for an hour and a quarter. Oh, time flies, doesn't it? I'm going to have to wrap it up. Tell you what, I'll give you five more minutes. Of, if you've got anything you want to ask me, I can bang through it real quick. Uh, if you have anything you want me to show you, um, someone asked me earlier on, best not uh, monitor braid. Right, depending on what it is. If I'm just, if it's just a spinning rod or just, just lacking about, you're not going to be seeing any real pressure. I'll just go uni knot to uni knot. And I've got it in a shock leader video on my channel. Um, on the likes of this, or on my big fixed spools, I usually use like uh, it's a, an alteration of the Alberto knot, and it was taught to me by uh, Chippy Chapman and uh, Kieran Fazy. And uh, the British record blue shark was caught on that shock leader knot, not that specific one, but that type of knot. I've I've also just started experimenting with, and where is it? It's in my tackle box. This knot on here, I don't know if I can find it. There, look. I don't know if you can see it, just at the top of there, is an FG knot. Now, the reason I haven't done an FG knot video is because I am still still working out the kinks on it. The, uh, the best tutorial that I have found is an Australian lad. Now, if you can put up with his accent, says me, uh, it's a fantastic video and it just does an FG knot. I think it's got 10 loops either side and he finishes it with what's called a risotto knot. Now I've liked his video so if you want to go through my liked videos you will find it. I can't remember if his name is something like Gansey or Bansey or something like that. I'll, it's on my it's on my liked videos but I, it's, it's cracking and I've, um, I've tried it a few times and I'm just to say getting it off pat but whenever I, I don't know if you can see this if if I'm ever tying a knot and I don't like it, I snip it off and tie it again. Because you know fine well that if you don't tie it 100% right, that'll be the time when you get great fish and you've lost it. Uh, don't sell out John, keep it honest. I will try my very best. As long as I'm paying my bills, I'll do what I want. What I'll do as I'm told. Um, got the warbird after you praised it and can't wait to give it a bash. I absolutely love them. I've had, it, I've had it on all day with me four or five times. I've had it on me in the States. I've had it on me in or in the Canaries. I've caught caught cracking fish with it in the UK. The best thing about it, it falls down into that size. And um, yeah, pretty cheap as well. Flood and warbirds we're talking about. Oh, Christ, I've lost where I am. Briggsy, that's it, Briggsy. Briggsy's video on the FG knot. Well done, Stevie D. Perfect, well thought of. Um, where am I going? Keep the great films, John. Really enjoyable. Thank you. Uh, are there any important rules I should be following for when I plot around in my dinghy in the harbour? I would. Um, yes. If if there's going to be any boat traffic, you want to. There will be a main channel probably, and you'll be able to see what that is. Is because there will be a, a red and a green marker boy. That main channel there is main channel for larger craft. If you stay out of that, you will generally be okay. Because without going all into the rules of the road and uh, give way and all that sort of stuff, and who's, 
like I say, sail, uh, power gives way to sail. There's, there's loads of different things for basic seamanship that I, I can't go into now. But unless you're going to go into it in depth, generally stay out of everyone's way. Um, if you've got a VHF, it's better to have one. I have a little handheld one, but you need a license to use it. And it, it's just, it's basically it teaches you how to use the radio and how to speak on the radio. Um, life jackets, that's something that I would recommend. I mean, the start of my videos, I didn't always wear one. I don't always wear one now, but that's only in, in situations where I have assessed it to be safe enough. So like if I'm, if I'm at anchor and it's a really calm day, but if there's any type of jowl or if there's anything that I'm doing, like say for instance, hauling or shooting anchor, or if I'm looking over the back of the outboard, I will always have a life jacket on. Um, great live video, I fully enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much, Scott. Um, I've enjoyed it. I've talked for a lot longer than I thought I was going to. Do you want to get a bit of dry, actually? It's, uh, <laughs> seeing both the bids started me off. Huge white bream yesterday. Oh, massive white bream. I actually found that the white bream came on more just as it was getting dark. It was, um, it was crazy. Uh, all I used to do was a little, little bit of squid and like a bit of prawn tipping it off and then white bream will crack it. Get some proper like four pounders. Um, there's a friend of mine actually that's in Malta at the minute and he says that they've got a lot of fish farms out there and there's been damage in the storms and uh, they've just been mobbed by little gilt heads because they've all escaped. Some people have all the luck, don't they? Um, I've seen both your vids, that's what started me off, great. I when I used to go out for sharks. I've had sharks take blown whiting and wrasse within inside of a mile of the coastline. Um, I've also, I've hooked uh, well, I've been bringing fish in and had sharks take them off the hook with inside of a mile. Generally, um, 10 mile. Generally. 10 mile out, not necessarily 10 mile off. Uh, love this, well done, Philene. I'll get off and wash your back and I should be asleep in bed by the time I get tired. I've still, still got my sandwich to eat. I bought some bread and tangled my first forecast and then took it off again. Are there any positive things? Um, lower diameter so it doesn't catch the tide as much i would say that possibly what you've got there matt is that he says it's uh, he bought some bread and tangled the first forecasts um those are probably wind knots and what's happened there is your braid wasn't tight enough onto your spool when you're winding it onto a spool you could probably actually if you have a look on my um i loaded braid onto my carbo reel for sharking and i put the i put the spool into a bucket of water and then wound it in under tension underneath my hand and then I let my wife she got hold of a towel and wrapped it round her hand and I pulled it in through there and then after that when I went on the boat um, I tied it to a rag and then let it over the side and then steamed off until I nearly emptied the roll, emptied the spool and then stopped the boat and then wound it in under tension so that the line is on the reel tight that way if you ever cast it or anything runs it doesn't bite in and it doesn't pull too much line off that's what I would recommend Braids, loads, loads easier, sorry, loads better for bite detection, it allows casting greater distances, it allows you to get more line on your spool, um, there are times when mono is better, but generally mono has got more stretch, so bite detection and setting a hook isn't as, isn't as easy. Um, have you still got the carbo, have you still got your carbo fixed spool shark outfit and have you ever used it? Yes, I have. Um, funnily enough actually one of my friends came down uh, and fished with me and he snapped it um, just it was what happens uh, but I liked it that much that I got him to get me a replacement and it's yeah fantastic setup I absolutely love it and I've caught loads of sharks on it uh, there will be there are there is a shark video on here when I was fishing off with Loki where I'm using it and I've used it on my own boat as well I will be using it a lot more this year uh, 200 gram popping rod, uh, carbo 80, uh, and I've, no actually it was a carbo 120 and I've got a carbo 80, uh, again bought second hand. Crikey, sorry about that. 
it's um i think what's happened is the battery's dropped below 10 percent i was just saying there uh, um les edwards about the car bore that was lucky actually that you spotted that and i was looking um <laughs> yeah i knew when you said half an hour you're being ambitious it, she's, you've got me talking about fishing and it's it's my passion uh, the carbo yeah i've got a um, 200 gram popping rod and a carbo 120 um, you will see i've actually got a video where i use it on kieran's boat loki fantastic setup brilliant for fighting sharks that's uh, the fixed bow setup if you've ever been shark fishing before you will have probably used multipliers and quite a lot fishing light is the best way to go I, it's it's amazing um, I stand by the fact that when you call it fighting a fish it wants to be a fight if you don't feel tired or like it's been a battle of wits or a battle of strength you went too heavy it's supposed to be fighting a fish um, I will be using it a lot more this year that carbo Must be time for a bit, mate. Sorry, back on now. You're back. Yay. Right, I am. I'm back. But I'm just about to leave. All I can say is uh, thank you, everybody, for taking part. Thank you all for getting in here. I've also got to figure out how to turn this off. We're learning as we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, this is all right. A nice fishing rod. I got sent this. By a subscriber I took it out fishing with me there'll be a video coming up in the next few weeks of me catching fish on that it was a great it was a great laugh but well, look at it I mean it says on it it says it's a 60 centimeter medium but look anyway um, all the best for fishing of the weekend I hope I hope it does okay the guy's driving a long way to come down here, so it's the least I could do with going meeting. Um, my mate Eddie needs some lessons on what to take on a session. He has a box to keep his <laughs> box in. Yeah, a box for a box. Yeah, uh, I know people like that. I'm the same, but I'm, I'm bags. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for taking part. Thank you for getting involved. Thank you for all the messages. And where have all these mosquitoes come from? Uh, I'm going to try and figure out how to turn this off now. Bear with me because it's going to be a blank screen. But, uh, wait a second. Oh, this is. I, I really like this. I've pinched it off my wife. But, um, you like when you get a bottle and it's got like a real small neck and you can never get a drink out of it? This thing's really great. Oh. Have a good one, lads. <laughs>